one. Good afternoon. This is the Headwater Science Center. I'm Lee Perseff. I'm the executive director here, and today is a Wednesday. So I'm going to be reading to Orion. I felt kind of bad lately because I haven't read to Orion I mean, five or six Wednesdays. For all of you that tune in every single Wednesday, I read to an animal here at the Science Center. Ryan, it's been weeks and weeks and weeks, so I'm so sorry you haven't been read to. Today is the day. Now, about a week ago, we started talking about toads and frogs. Today is books about toads. Last week, I read you some fascinating books that were nonfiction. They were about frogs and toads, and I hope you learned something from all of that. Today, don't bother to even try to learn. These are fictional books, and they're just for the fun of it. If you end up having some sort of wonderfully educational, informative experience, you didn't get it from me. I'm just reading your books for the fun of it. First one has nothing to do with frogs or toads. It's actually about turkeys, and it's a book of jokes. So get ready. Get ready to just roar out of laughter. Then I'll do the next one. Orion, are you ready? Here comes the very first joke, and yes, there are pictures. So, what do you get if you cross an octopus with a turkey? Dun, da, da, da. You get a complete Thanksgiving dinner with eight drumsticks. <laughs> get it? Eight drumsticks? Yeah, it's probably is a tough one for you because you already have four legs. What did... The sweet potato say to the turkey, what? Here I am. Get it? Yam, here I am. Okay, that was a good one. I liked it. What did the turkey say when he was past the potatoes? What? Oh, no, thank you. No, thank you. No, thank you. I'm already stuffed. Ah, <laughs> there it is. I'm already stuffed. <laughs> These are going over your head, Orion. It's because you don't know so much about turkeys. Say, what did the silly pig, why did the silly pig cover his ears when he was past, when he was past the turkey? Why? He covered his ears because he didn't want to hear any gobbledy joke. That's not it. <laughs> Follow language. Yeah. Ah, nice try. <laughs> what do you get if you cross glue with a turkey? What? That would be gobbledy goo. Ah. ah, he was early with his punch on it. Last but not least, why isn't it safe for turkeys to do mathematics? Because if you add three and five, you get eight. Eight. <laughs> there you are. Now, what would I do if I were you? I'd listen to that whole recording, get them memorized, and then right at the first opportune moment tomorrow, Thanksgiving Day, just let one drop right there during dinner. One of those jokes. Sprinkle some turkey puns into the entire day. There you go. Just sprinkle them in. Was that a pun? Sprinkle them in. Maybe not. All right. Now we're back to talking about frogs and toads. Frogs and toads. I'm going to tell you, a frog in the bog is just that. Just for the fun of it. If you learn anything, good for you. Because it's not designed for that purpose. Designed just for fun of it. I'm sure you'll get it. Frog in the bog. Frog in the bog. There's a frog on the log in the middle of a bog. Small green frog and a half sunk log out in the middle of the bog. How are we doing there for the picture? Are we doing pretty well? Yeah, I zoomed in a little bit. Yeah, take a look at that half sunk log. Well worth looking at. He flicks one tick and it creeps up a stick. One tick in the belly of a small green frog and a half sunk log in the middle of a bog. And the frog grows a little bit bigger. He has two fleas as they leap through the reeds. One tick, two fleas in the belly of the frog on a half sunk log in the middle of a bog. The grow and the frog grows a little bit bigger. He spies three flies as they buzz through the skies. 
One tick, two fleas, three flies, oh my, in the belly of the frog, on a half sunk log in the middle of the bog. And the frog grows a little bit bigger. He gulps for slugs as they sink, as they slink through the sludge. One tick, two fleas, three flies, oh my, four slugs, ooh, ugh, in the belly of the frog, on a half sunk log. In the middle of the bog, the frog grows a little bit bigger. <laughs> Seems to me this should be set to music. It yeah. just should be. If mm -hmm. there was just a melody going on here in my I head, I could maybe figure it out. But yeah. He inhales five snails from their heads to their tails. That's one tick, two fleas, three flies, oh my, four slugs, ooh, ugh, and five slimy snails in the belly of the frog on a half sunk log in the middle of the bog. What a hog, that frog. The frog grows a little bit bigger than that log with the frog. In the middle of the bog starts to rise. And the frog sees eyes. And the frog sees claws and a big set of jaws and a mouth like a crater. And the frog screams, Gator! I'm not sure Orion's like in any of this. Orion is showing very little interest. Yeah, put with, in nice, a nice nap. There it is. With his mouth open wide, all the bugs inside start to crawl and fly and to slither and slide. Out comes five snails from their heads to their tails. Four slugs, ooh, ugh. Buzz, 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 three flies, oh my. I'm coming out. Coming out. Two fleas, dear me. And one tiny tick. Ick. Right in the middle of his holler, that frog grows a little, a whole lot smaller. See you later, says the gator as he romps through the swamp. Because the itty bitty frog isn't big enough to chomp. Now. The bugs in the bog keep away from the frog, and the frog never sits on a half sunk clog. The end. All right. Now, to the headliner. Final book for today. The final one before Thanksgiving. Codes on Toast. That's the name of the book. It's by Linda Bailey and Colin Jack. So I have a question, and it's going out to James, who's on the other side of the camera. James, you know what a toad in the hole is? I do now. I do know what a toad in the hole is. Aha, uh -huh, he knows. This is a book about toad in the holes. And I'm going to tell you, yep, when I grew up, oh, now we got a story. Once upon a time, when I grew up, yep, there was oatmeal, and there was something called malto meal. Those were regular meals. But every once in a while, my mom would make toad in the holes. And I still make toad in the holes. And they're pretty doggone good. The villain in the story is a fox. Sorry, Orion, if that makes you nervous. I just want you to know, no toads were eaten in the reading of this book. Toads on toads. Well, I suppose that let the cat out of the bag. Oh, sorry, I mentioned a cat. I don't really mean a cat. It's just an expression. Fox was bored. Every day it was the same. Walk to the pond, catch a big fat toad, bring it home, skin it, boil it, eat it. I need a change, said Fox. I'm going to check in now with Ryan. Ryan's here too. He's on the other side of the camera, but not, he's not the camera man. I'm just checking in with him. Ryan? Are we a little mixed up here because he went to the bog, he went to the pond to get a toad? Um, yeah, they don't spend a ton of time directly in the water, but they still got to be relatively near water. Like, there might be toads around. All right. Back to fiction anyway. But I thought there's a point. We got somebody writing about toads that are in a pond. He headed for the cookbook store. The toad section was amazing. Who knew there were so many ways to cook a toad? As Fox turned the pages, he noticed something surprising. Every single recipe called for small toads, tender toads, young toads. 
Gee, said Fox, so that's what's been wrong all these years. Oh, all right. There's a rabbit in the story. Right there. That evening, he set out for the pond as usual. But this time, instead of looking for a big fat toad, he looked for small toads, young and tender. Let me check in with Ryan again. Ryan, do you really think foxes hunt at night? Because he goes there during the night. Especially not sure with foxes, if they're mm -hmm. nocturnal or not. It wouldn't surprise me, I guess. I can hear a 3.30 <laughs> live show coming on any moment now. I feel like Ryan's every time I see foxes, uh, it's like at dawn. That's when I see them. Maybe they're a dawn and dusk. Maybe they're a crepuscular thing. Oh, <laughs> say that again, Lee. Crepuscular. Crepuscular. There can be the educational opportunity during the reading of purely fictional pieces of... It was hard work. Those toadlets were fast. Can you see that in the camera? It's so dark. Mm -hmm. He's out there catching toadlets, but it is in the dark. By the time Fox got home, he was all puffed out. Get it? Puffed out. This is this author's puff, you know, huff and a puff. And mm -hmm. I'm like, of course, that wasn't a fox. That was a wolf, wasn't it? But anyway, he's all puffed out. But he was carrying a lovely bouncing sack of fresh young toads for dinner. There they are. There they are. Oh, this is a frightening book to you. I can tell. But Ryan's very frightened. He's very concerned about the young toads that are about to be eaten. This is going to be so great, said Fox as he dumped the toads into a bowl. He opened the first cookbook. Suddenly, a huge mother toad came rocketing through the window. Stop, she cried. What are you doing? Trying to concentrate, said Fox. Now let's see. Toad muffins. Toad soup. Toad stir fry. Mama stared, aghast at her babies. You're going to eat them? Ah, said Fox. Here's a good one. Toad legs. Now, I've honestly never heard of toad legs. I've heard of frog legs, but I've never heard of toad legs. No, said Mama, not their legs. They have such beautiful legs. I noticed, said Fox, licking his lips, especially the wincy ones. I'm not sure wincy is a word, by the way. I think this author took a little bit of liberty and made it up wincy ones. I was going to say teensy wincy. Yeah, but this like was just little... a wincy. Because yeah. I feel like it's tiny, then teeny, then teensy, then teensy wincy, and then wincy. It's like right. four steps. Boy. Hope all you listeners are hanging on to the story where we're off the beaten path talking about whether <laughs> wincy is a word or not. We all knew what it meant. We all knew it meant small, so all we're right. not. Okay. <laughs> Stop, cried Mama, throwing herself against the book. Take me instead. Fox thought about it. The recipes were clear. You're too old and stringy, he said. Sorry. He reached for his knife. They don't show the knife, by the way. There's no knife in the actual photo. Now, there isn't the next one over. Ah! cried Mama Toad. Wait! There must be a better recipe. Their poor legs are so thin, hardly a mouthful. Fox glanced at the toadlets and frowned. It was true that their legs were quite scrawny. A good time to zoom in. Any, any scrawny legs showing up there? Can, mm -hmm. How about that one climbing up the side of the bowl? Yeah. Yeah, scrawny legs. It was true that their legs were quite scrawny. Mama glanced at the toadlets, too. She was not pleased. Calvin! She bellowed. I wonder if toads can actually bellow. I mean, that's not a term you usually have with toads. It... Calvin! Get away from that butter! That must be Calvin. Why, said Calvin. Because I said so, said Mama. Hey, said Fox. Here's a good recipe. Toads on toast. Looks easy, too. Mama hopped over to take a peek. Well, maybe. She said, do you have garlic? Yes, said Fox. Bread? Yes, yes. Pepper? Yes. Truffle oil? Truffle oil. Fox peered at the book. It doesn't say anything about truffle oil. Well, it should, said Mama. Everyone knows you can't make toads on toast without truffle oil. Where did you get that? 
Karami cookbook anyway. Uptown, same thoughts. Vince, you got any truffle oil at your house? Uh, we don't carry any truffle oil. No truffle oil? No, but I've heard it's good. I went to the 209 the other day, and I ordered their fries in truffle oil. Mm. Yeah. Was it good? A little spendy. Yep, you're going to spend more money on truffle oil. But, you know, it? it was fun to... Yeah. Was at the 209. Yeah, Just they, in they case, don't blame me if you go to the 209 and then I was at the, the wrong restaurant. You can certainly go try truffle oil. Listen, said Mama, I'm going to help you out. I have a better toad recipe, a secret favorite recipe that's been passed down through my family year after year after year. You're going to love it. What's it called? asked Fox. Toad in the hole, said Mama. Mmm, said Fox. It has toast, she said. You like toast, right? Oh, yes, said Fox, rubbing his paws together. I do love toast. All right. Now, I don't know if you've ever done this, Orion, rubbing your paws together. Now, I know you often rub your paws against your nose, but it's kind of like this. It's kind of an expression of, ooh, I can, yeah, you're giving it a try. Did you see that? She was actually giving it, he, sorry, He's actually giving it a try, rubbing his paws together. <laughs> now, the fox is rubbing his paws because he's going, oh, this is going to be so good at toad in the hole. Well, you slice some bread, said Mama. Well, I see to my kids, Brucey, Loretta, get out of that honey pot. Okay, then. Get out of the honey pot. Ready, said Fox. Mama hopped over. Excellent, she said. This bread is perfect. Just make a hole in the center. A hole in the center. Looks a little elliptical to me in this particular case. Mm -hmm. I've never made them with an elliptical it's hole. A, it's a wide toad in the hole. Yeah. I always used a donut cutter Ooh. in mine. You could probably do like a star cookie cutter or something and make it really fancy. It'd be interesting. Yeah. It might affect the flipping. Yeah, that's true. How about a Santa Claus one? You <laughs> Santa Claus yeah, one. yeah. for cookie a turkey in, in honor of Thanksgiving. Ooh. I bet there are some turkey cookie cutters out there. There's gotta be. Yeah. Excellent, she said. This bread is perfect. Just make a hole in the center. Goody, said Fox. This is easy. Next, said Mama. You butter the bread and put it in a frying pan. Erlene and Elvis, stand back. Yum, said Fox. I love the butter. So that was the stand back line. They must be the two that are right in front there, just hanging kind of over the top of the fry pan. That would be Erlene and Elvis. Have these kids been named in alphabetical order? They must have been. They're not going all the way back. No, Bruce and Loretta. Uh, well, maybe they are, but hmm. they just happen to be. Are together. they like? Are they all like um, musicians or something? Ooh. I'm trying to figure out too. Is there some theme hmm. to them? So who do you think the Brucey is? Bruce Springsteen. Um, all right. Huh? I don't know. Sorry, we're off the path again <laughs> because the last kids she talked to were. Queen and Elvis. Well, that was the ones just mentioned, but. Oh, Calvin. Who would Calvin be? Calvin was the one laying on the butter over here. Yeah, I don't know. Maybe the names are just kind of random. Wow. Still with me in the story? Those listeners out there? We're Yum, fine. said Fox. I love butter. And now, said Mama, you break an egg and pour it into the hole. So this is going in here. This is going right here. You break the egg, put it in there. Now I'm thinking that all of the chickens that are listening to the story are right now kind of feeling not so good, even though the frogs and the toads are going, oh, nice strategy. Hopefully they're not baby eggs. Hopefully they're just eggs. Yeah. You can explain that during a whole other show. Yeah. <laughs> well, Angie did, actually. There's a show about eggs. Angie did it about already. <laughs> ten days ago. An egg, said Fox, not a toad. An egg, said Mama firmly. An ad, just a bit. Salt and pepper. No toads? Asked Frog again. Trust me, said Mama. Now flip it over. Sprinkle some Parmesan cheese. Hey, said Fox. Wait a minute. Something funny going on. What about the toads? Try it without, said Mama. Fox grumbled a little. He pouted. He stared at the toadlets. And he did take a nibble, then a bite, and then, wow, that is delicious, said Fox. You see, said Mama, it doesn't really need toast. 
odes. That's the secret. By golly, you're right, said Fox. I'm going to make another one. And he did make another one. And another, and another. Then he made enough for everyone. Mama, Toad, set the table, and they all sat down to eat. I'll get this book back to the library as fast as I possibly can, so that you could take a look and see what all the books were about. And Fox, being a lazy fox, never again went to the trouble of looking through the recipe books. He didn't bother to catch any more toads, either. And later, when he had children of his own, he passed Mama's secret recipe on to them. Toad in the Hole became a famous recipe in the Fox family. And it can be a favorite in your family, too, as long as you don't add toads. Here's the recipe right here. I'll hold it right up to the camera, and if you were one of those very techie people, you could go, oh, I could take a picture right now, and then I would have the recipe. Yes, Mama Toad's secret Toad in the Hole recipe. Yeah. Please note that about six or seven lines down from the top of the recipe, they do cross out one to one toad. But definitely don't put any toads in your Toad in the Hole. That completes the story for today. Thanks right. for tuning in. All right, now we have a little change of schedule. These 3.30 shows are great. They're all kinds of fun, but we're going to back a little bit off. And from now on, we're going to do 3.30 shows on, write this down, Sunday, Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. That's four days a week, Sunday, Monday, Wednesday, Friday. If you were wondering, how am I going to remember that? Well, the Monday, Wednesday, Friday. That's really easy. The first day, the third day, and the fifth day of the week. And then, of course, Sunday. That's the first oh. Okay, that's the second day of the weekend. I can see how this is going to be confusing. Why don't you write it down? Sunday, Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. Orion, why don't you say goodbye? Oh, you're right. Orion says, make sure you know the hours. We're open seven days a week. That's Monday through Saturday, 9.30 to 5. And every single Sunday, 1 to 5. All right, now you could wave goodbye. Have a happy Thanksgiving. The Science Center is closed tomorrow. 